Hi there, Steve Kaufman here again. Uh, it was a lovely day here in Vancouver. I actually played some golf with my wife. Uh, we had a lovely dinner. And what I'd like to talk about now is something that relates to a recent uh, blog post where I talked about a gentleman called John Taylor Gatto. And John Taylor Gatto is a very bitter, I would have to call him, critic of public schooling. Uh, and uh, he, and I put a number of his quotes on my, on my blog, The Linguist on Language, uh, and I think some of his criticisms of schooling are quite appropriate. And he talks about the cost of schooling, public schooling, and it's, I don't know what it is, $10,000 per person per year, there's 25 kids in a classroom. So that classroom is costing $250,000 every year for nine months. That's an awful lot of money uh, for very, very uh, limited results. Uh, I think there are all kinds of options to that. And I, I believe that the iPad is, is going to be one of the ways in which the, uh, the monopoly control that the school system exercises will be challenged and that people will have more choice. But, and so I think those are all very positive things and I, and I, and I agree with uh, John Taylor Gatto in a lot of his criticisms of public schooling. Now, where I don't agree uh, is where he sort of attacks modern society. He s seems to claim that, that schooling, making kids sit in the classroom is is really just an opportunity to train them to be good workers so that they can work in factories or in offices and uh, that they'll be docile citizens and that somehow there was this other age and in his interviews that I listened to he talks about Monongahela or some place in Pennsylvania which was such a wonderful place yeah, but the fact is most of those people worked in a steel mill. Uh, and that everybody there was such a good person and nowadays people are disconnected from each other and from anything that matters and so forth. And uh, th there was just some kind of golden age out there before schooling when people had uh, better values and stuff. And, you know, I was also listening on my favorite source of Russian learning, which is Echo Moskvi, and they interviewed Robert Bateman, who is a very famous Canadian painter. And he also said that he once, as a teacher, worked in Nigeria, and he was a teacher in a small village, and everybody in the village was very happy. Uh, they didn't have much, but they were happy. Uh, but when they went to the city, then they became unhappy. So this whole idea that people who live in primitive circumstances, whether in a village in Africa or three, four hundred years ago, that those people were happier. Um, you know, obviously, I have not lived in an African village. Um, I didn't live three, four hundred years ago. I don't know how happy those people were. But what I do know is that the people who live in African villages want desperately to move to the cities. Because in the cities, there's work. And in the cities, there's an opportunity to earn money and to buy things. And those people are not necessarily people who have been corrupted by our, certainly not by our North American education system. Uh, I know that um, in the 17th century, uh, the average, and the 18th century, and for much of the 19th century, the average life expectancy was 30 to 40 years. Um, there was no transportation. You couldn't, it was very difficult to go anywhere. And if you had a bumper crop in your area, it would rot because you couldn't store it and you couldn't move it to those areas where they didn't have a bumper crop and where they starved because they had a poor crop. Uh, I know that in those days, the conspicuous consumption, and this is another thing that people complain about, is the consumerism in our society. I say consumerism is good. It means people have a choice. They can choose what they want to buy. 
uh, and very often they have the means. Now, unfortunately, some people to choose to consume beyond their means. But this, again, is their choice. Uh, but back in the 17th century, 80-90% of the people who lived on the land had no choice. They got to keep a percentage of the harvest. The landowner nobleman took the rest. The state, you know, King Louis the Fourteenth or whatever, or Kaiser Franz Josef or whoever it might have been, they gobbled up all the money through taxation. They were the only consumers in a modern sense. They had servants, they bought the luxury goods. And today, uh, we have an opportunity to buy a variety of goods that they could not have dreamed of. Besides which, we live to 70 or 80 years, even in poor countries. So that's not to say that there aren't problems today, but to suggest that in some golden era in the olden days, people were better off, I don't believe it. And I also don't believe this whole thing about how we've, you know, we're cutting down all the trees and we're polluting the air and stuff. If you read about London or other medieval European cities in the 17th and 18th century, sanitary conditions were much worse than they are today and people died of all kinds of diseases. Today, yeah, there are issues. There are issues with pollution. There is the issue of, of the non-renewable resources that we're depleting. Uh, I happen to believe that we will find technical solutions and that the only way to get out of this conundrum is through technology, which will either reduce our consumption of non-renewables or we'll find substitute uh, you know, energy resources or we'll find more of the same, but my hope is that we will find a way to not deplete the world of non-renewable resources. But there are seven billion people, or close to that number, alive today. Uh, in the good old days, there were barely a billion. I mean, that's a lot of people who have been given the gift of life. And most of those people live better today and longer, and healthier, and they're more literate, they read more, they're more aware of things. I mean, life is infinitely better today than it was 100 or 200 years ago, in my view. Uh, and I think that the, you know, with this whole global warming thing, it's very fashionable to knock the West and, you know, industrialization and stuff. But that's what has brought us this uh, improvement in our living standards. So, I am not a fan of everything was great many hundreds of years ago. But I do think, as John Taylor Gatto points out, that there are problems with our education system. And that the idea that you spend $10,000 per child per year um, and then you have no choice uh, I believe that we are going to be witnessing the same kind of revolution that took place on the land, where we used to be 90% of the people on the land, where we had no choice, and the lords and the nobility and the kings decided everything. We're going to have more choice. And I believe, strangely, perhaps, that the iPod, iPad, this idea of an electronic tablet where you can be connected anywhere and at any time, that this is the key to getting rid of the monopoly control of education that pu the public education system has and the public teachers unions have and all of these monolithic organizations that tell everybody what to learn, how to learn, etc. and regiment them that this is going to come unra become unraveled and I think the iPad is going to be a big part of it. And I'm going to be talking about that more over the next little while. So thank you for listening. Bye for now.